After the battles of Lexington and Concord in April 1775, Militiamen began the siege of Boston after the British regulars retreated to Boston and began to hunker down there. Isn't that goofy? The supposedly best military in the world, the British, were scared of a bunch of farmers with guns. Who wouldn't be? I look really tough, huh? The colonists had succeeded against the British army in skirmishes, but pitch battle was a different question. Would they be successful? The question was answered less than two months after Lexington and Concord. Exciting, Ricky. They fixing to go to battle. You ain't got no idea what's going on, do you, Virgil? Now listen, colonial militiamen surrounded Boston to prevent the movement of the British troops outside of the city. Was Boston sieged like when the local deputy surrounded Uncle Jack's trailer for producing his homemade shine? Good grief, Virgil. On June 13, 1775, the colonists discovered something terrible. The British were going to place troops in the currently unoccupied Charlestown Peninsula across the Boston Harbor to the north. Yeah, that wasn't great news, so we had to respond. Our fearless leader, Colonel William Prescott, took 1,200 of the colonial troops to occupy Bunker Hill on the north end of the Charlestown Peninsula. Although given the order to fortify Bunker Hill, the troops got somewhat confused and went to Breed's Hill, which was significantly closer to the British position. Hold on here, let me get this straight. The colonists got confused and marched on the wrong hill. You got it, Virgil. The wrong dang hill. Him troops showed up at Breed's Hill, not Bunker Hill. So this battle should have been called the Battle of Breed's Hill. Yep, you finally got something right. On June 17th, the British came out all hotty toddy in perfect battle formations under General William Howe. They thought they could intimidate us with their size and class. But the colonists were just a ragtag bunch of men who came from several different colonies, and there wasn't a clear chain of command. Them colonists seemed like us, a bunch of hillbillies from the holler without a pot to piss in. Yet, Virgil, they were a hodgepodge of city folk and farmers just trying to defend their land and rights. The British were known for being extremely well-trained troops, so the British regulars likely felt pretty good about their odds. Yeah, shows you how much the Redcoats knew about the Patriots. But General Howe, who was the British commander, thought that the colonists were a bunch of wusses and would retreat once they realized they were facing a better fighting force that had been trained. The colonists didn't fire until the British regulars were within 50 yards. The British charged up Breed's Hill twice, and we fought them back inflicting many casualties. The third time we ran out of ammo and had to fight with our hands. The British eventually beat us, forcing us off the hill. Don't fire until you see the white of their eyes is often attributed to Colonel Prescott. I'm a pretty good shot, but don't think I'm seeing the enemy's eyes 50 yards away. Yeah, good point, Virgil. The colonists had shown the British that they could stand up to the Redcoats even in pitched battle, and that the victory was won at too great a cost to the victor. As General Howe said, the success is too dearly bought. The British suffered over 1,000 casualties in comparison to about 450 for the colonists. Many thought that the British troops should have been fewer. He could have easily surrounded the colonists with the mighty British ships which were waiting out in the sea. Three weeks later, I came to Massachusetts to take command of the Continental Army. News of the battle was spreading fast, reaching the king who issued a proclamation of rebellion. It was time for war. This is very important, Virgil. Battle Bunker Hill was really the first battle of the American Revolution. I'm ready to battle with them redcoats. I brought my rifle and ammo. Settle down, Virgil. General Washington has it under control. <laughs>